what we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is, is it fair to all concerned? Will and better friendships will be beneficial to all concerned. And you also have to turn the screen so we can see the meeting. Would you please? Can you hear me, Ron? Can you hear me, Ron? Um, Ron, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Bow your, head, your heads in prayer. Almighty God, as our lives seem distant and disjointed, we remember that you are always close, and in this divine closeness, we are one no matter where we sit. We are living through a moment of deep disruption, chaos, and anxiety. The things and people we hold dearest must distance from us, and the normal order of life has been upended. As we navigate this pandemic, we must remember that you are close enough to whisper peace to our weary hearts and that we should listen to your divine whisper. You call each of us to a specific work, to make a contribution that only we can make. We pray today for the courage, skill, and sacrifice of all caregivers, caregivers serving in this time. Be with the families of all who serve. Send your peace for their anxieties, joy for their fears, hope for their despair, and light for their darkness. Whisper your words of comfort, encouragement, and hope to all who need them in these troubled days. Draw close to those who are sick and all those who risk illness caring for them. Almighty God, as we approach Thanksgiving, we want to to pause and thank you for the blessings surrounding us. You are the source of all good things and we praise you for the simple things that bring us joy. May we be thankful for all we have. We pray this in the name of the God we worship, amen. I had a hard time getting in. We all did, Annette. Did you? Yeah. I sent a text to Rachel and said, are we having a meeting? <laughs> Someone's new doing it. Oh, OK. Can we talk on Zoom, or are we interrupting the music in the meeting? I don't know. Hey, uh, interrupt in the music, huh? <laughs> Sorry. Yes. All right. Zoom, please uh, go to the uh, Zoom chat and make sure to put your name in there so that uh, Stuart can get some information for you. Jeff Whitby, where are you? Night, not me. Good afternoon and welcome to the greatest club on earth. Somehow or other, you got to start bringing some guests. Wayne Schmaltz, just in case you were ever wondering, my back in high school, a bunch of my friends, we had a class. So we created Wayne Schmaltz. We became seven votes of winning. Oh, wow. We didn't go for a recount. Oh. What's there to ask for? Don't you have some? So, in case you were wondering, Thank you. Welcome all the room. Stu, who was our 15th uh, temperature check? No. Hey! Mark is in the room. I paid you $5. Yeah. 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 Do you have any happy bucks? Come well, we got to have a couple. What about them lions? <laughs> The Lions' very, very convincing victory. <laughs> Anybody else? No. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. A couple things. Um, good news because we're all desperate for good news, right? One is uh, our last construction project opened up on the Quinder Road, which is wide open. Huge and fantastic for us. It's the last big one for the year. And then, secondly, 
um, a big thanks to all of you. I saw Julianne on the screen because um, we uh, had a nice shout out from the library. But the city of Rochester Hill has just finished uh, a census count and we finished fourth in the nation, uh, which is really incredible for us. It's something that will continue to make a difference for us over the next 10 years. Uh, so thank you to all uh, who filled out the census, those of you who helped spread the message, but in every other city in America, save four, uh, and that uh, really excellent record will help us in the next 10 years. Anybody else? Four is in what? Seriously, four is in what? What category? I don't understand. Reporting. Reporting. Yeah, that's reporting. Birthdays. We've got three guys that their birthday is today. Stand back. Tom Inger, Vince Matina, Tom Nouveau are all today, and Dave Archibald is tomorrow. So let's sing happy birthday to our world friends. Anniversaries: Eric Whipple, six years. Joe Allen, twenty-five years. Wow! I didn't know you were old enough to have twenty-five years in here. Ron Delito, nine years. Congratulations. Love announcements. Is Ron Delito here? He's not in the room. I thought he might want to say something about the uh, board positions coming up. Uh, Rachel. Hold on, I gotta share the screen real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Hi, everybody. I am so glad that you're all here today, the ones that are here. I made special point set of cookies that I wish I could bring to everybody that's on Zoom, but um, I'll get you when we can see each other again. Now, 2020 has been difficult for all of us. Um, you know, we weren't able to be together for a golf outing. We didn't get to do our wine tasting. There's so many things that we've missed out on and point set is, is not immune to all the negative things that have happened in 2020. You know, we haven't been able to get as many <laughs> points set as sold because not all the businesses are open or aren't buying as much. And we can all focus on that negative and be frustrated. Or what we can do is we can think, wow, I saved a lot of money by not going and drinking all that wine and by not going and uh, golfing and spending that money. And I've saved a lot of money in gas by doing that. How can I spend that money? And can you go to the next slide, Blake? We really want to think about who we can bring poinsettias to? Who would like poinsettias? Who can we bring some kind of brightness to? I know last year, um, my great aunt unfortunately lost her son in a car accident. And that's, you never want to lose a child. That's the worst thing that you could go through. And in that, she wasn't able to see her granddaughter as much anymore. And I stopped by with my kids to bring her a little $20 poinsettia and it is something she still talks about now. It was amazing just to see the look on her face. She was just blown away at how gorgeous these were. And that small gesture made a huge impact on her life when she had such a dark year. A lot of us have experienced some kind of darkness this year. And to be able to give that to someone who you know has been struggling, who you know has been alone or lonely, you can drop it off on their doorstep, call them and let them know there's a prize out there. It's a beautiful thing to do, especially if we're not able to see each other uh, for the holidays. So I want to make sure you guys keep that in mind as something that would be exciting to the next one. Bring some smiles to the faces. These are some of the people who got poinsettias uh, last year or the year before with the um, their Meals on Wheels, and it just completely makes their day. It's a really huge, um, a huge thing that we do for them. So I really ask you to think about who you can make have a brighter day with these points that is. We go to the next one. Right now, we are at 65% of our goal. 
I challenge all of us to make sure that this graph right here that I have is full of all red petals. We wanna make sure that we hit what we did last year and it would be really phenomenal if we went beyond that. More than I accidentally ordered too many plants this year and if we could help them out, help our local community and sell more, that would just be phenomenal. We have 625 plants to go to hit our goal and I'd love for you guys to help us. So here are all these beautiful, beautiful poinsettias right now. This is a picture from today and they're ready to go make somebody stay brighter. So if anybody could really push themselves to do that, I'd really appreciate it and I know they would too. So thank you guys. And if anyone has questions about ordering online or anything like that, please feel free to come to me. I'll stay after a little while after the meeting. Have a little on order because our sheriff has to run home. Something to do with his, one of his children. So, David Blair. <laughs> Customers in this room. We were just having that conversation. And uh, earlier today, I had to do something that kind of made me sad. I had to take Mel's name out of my ledger and put Patsy's name in his place. So we all need to pay a dollar for Mel Gay. May he rest in peace. He was a good man and he deserves a dollar from each one of us. You know, these are challenging times. And, uh, you know, every Rotarian is kind of doing things their own way to keep things fun, to keep things safe. I was just at Peter's new building. and Boy, howdy, Peter, that's a gorgeous looking building you put up there. Um, a safety feature that I don't think a lot of people are aware of is the architecture service hole that you cut in the side of the building where you take your money, you shove it in the hole, and you take your plans and pull them out. And then you've got your home right there. And it's a safe way to do business. And I wanted to commend you on that. Drive through, I think it's, it's architecture hole, I think is needs a little bit of work. Yeah, it's a $5 fine there. Some Rotarians have been decorating their masks, which is kind of a fun way to do it. Uh, Ron has put uh, whiskers on his mask like a kitty. That's a $5 fine, so it's not very funny. Um, Ethan, uh, where's Ethan? Uh, Ethan's actually drawn, you know, facial hair on his mask because he's worked so hard on his actual facial hair. He wanted to make sure that it, you know, was always visible. Uh, Christine, uh, the buck teeth on your mask were really cute. I'm looking over here because you're, you're, you're virtual, but you're not immune from fines. <laughs> uh, Vince, <laughs> Vince was keeping us laughing with the huge lipstick that you put on yours. That was, that was cute. And, uh, you know, uh, Pete DeHamel, the, uh, the Gene Simmons, I had the big tongue coming out. That was really funny, too. We like that. Boy, I'll tell you what, driving around, it seems like more and more decorations are going up for Christmas earlier than usual. Anybody else been noticing that? You know, um, I think it's, it's kind of cute, you know, that uh, people are getting into the holiday spirit, but uh, I did want to let you know, Phil. I heard from uh, Bloom I heard from Bloomfield that your decorations violate numerous ordinances, and you need to take them down. It's a five dollar fine for you. Um, Marty has put up a twelve foot, not Santa, but a five, a, a twenty foot. Uh, Paul Harris went up in your uh, in your yard, so that was a that was still cool. a five dollar fine though. Anybody planning on having people over for Thanksgiving? I know a lot of those plans got canceled, you know, it's too bad. Um, but, you know, if you are, it's a $5 safety hazard fine if you're having a lot of people over. Uh, if you stuff the turkey, you're, not, you're supposed to stuff it, you're not supposed to stuff it. It's a $5 fine either way. I don't know what the, what the rule is for that. Um, if, you, if you make the stuffing or if you buy the stuffing, you know, $5, $5 fine if you have stuffing. How's that sound? If you've got a drawer in your kitchen with stuff in it, that's a $5 fine too. I'm happy the election's behind us. Uh, pay a dollar if you voted. 
dollar if you didn't vote, dollar if you're a Democrat, dollar if you're a Republican, five dollars if you wrote a Rotarian in, pay another five dollars if, I don't know, you had to wait more than five minutes. Everybody pay five dollars, I guess is the, what I'm trying to say, because uh, all this money goes to a really good cause. It's how we fund the scholarship activities, uh, helping the community organizations that need uh, donations and things. Really important, you reach down in your pocket, pull out five or more, Put it on the table. If you're meeting with us virtually, type it in the chat, hit send. Uh, we'll be able to see how much you put in the chat and we will apply it to your account. Thank you, everybody. God bless. One thing you said, the elections are over. I don't think it's over till it's over. <laughs> Rachel, you were Rotarian of the Week. Yes, you were nominated by Bill Ebinger last week. So if you could come up and give away this prize. Well, I got about 30 second warning on that. <laughs> so I am going to give this to Steve. He has been an awesome leader for us for Poinsettias. Is always really excited about everything that we have going on, and I really appreciate it. So Steve, come on up for Rotarian of the Week. I think a good idea would be to put that in the closet so we don't lose it again. All right. During the July 28th club meeting, I gave the 2021 kickoff presentation. And at that time, I shared with you that during this rotary year, we would be bringing our club constitution and bylaws in the compliance with the directive, directives from the rotary International. We had to bring the club constitution into compliance in order to stay a Rotary Club. Uh, we had a committee meet many times to bring our constitution in compliance and had two attorneys review it. On October 21st, the club's board voted unanimously to recommend that the club membership to vote to adopt the standard club constitution as our new Rotary Club constitution. The board has to give the membership three weeks to review before we vote on the changes. It was emailed to the membership, copies were here with Vince, if you missed it. Its content is identical with Rotary International Club Constitution with what they expect us to do. Jeff Whitby, we have a quorum. Okay, the club secretary just announced we do have a quorum. So, all those in favor of adopting the new Rotary Club Constitution so we can stay a Rotary Club at this point, raise your hand. Any opposed? Okay, we have one. I think it passed. That wasn't opposed. The club meeting, the new Rochester Rotary Club Constitution is approved. Tim Duncan, is he here or is someone else going to introduce our, our speaker? I'm on Zoom. Can you hear me, Rune? Ron? Ron, can you hear me? Can. You can? Yes. Yeah. All right, perfect. So good afternoon, Rotarians. Uh, today, it is my pleasure to introduce Kathy Lazinski. Kathy is the Executive Director of Neighborhood House a local human services agency seeking to improve the lives of financially burdened citizens by delivering tools aimed at removing barriers to self-sustainability. As a graduate of the University of Michigan with a Bachelor's of Science in Education, Kathy has consistently applied a philosophy of service to many different professional endeavors while raising three children with her husband of 35 years. She has been affiliated with Neighborhood House since 1997 as a volunteer, then as chairperson of the board of directors for the past five years as executive director, Regardless of the role she has played, her focus has been on improving the social environment, directly challenging the local community. In a move to advance from providing emergency services to self-sustainability programming, 
Kathy spearheaded the purchase of the main office building on Livernois in 2016. The relocation has provided space that has allowed the organization to enhance its traditional services while expanding access to mental health counseling and providing a vast array of barrier-free educational programs focused on self-sufficiency. During the 2019 inaugural year of the Career Development Program, 28 households experienced greater financial freedom because they had access to these new resources. Kathy continues to lead the organization during the COVID-19 pandemic by adjusting to new programming and fundraising strategies while maintaining the Michigan mission of Neighborhood House. Neighborhood House walks the path towards self-sustainability with our neighbors during times of hardship. Please join me in welcoming Kathy Lazinski. Thank you, everybody. Am I off mute? <laughs> can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, we thank can you. Hear you. First thing I want to say is uh, that was a thumbs up, not a thumbs down. So um, if anybody recorded that as one opposed, uh, that was a belated uh, thumbs up there instead of opposed. So just wanted to share that. Anyway, um, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to brief you on the updates that we have at Neighborhood House. And I'm going to try and um, share my screen here um, with um, a slideshow about um, what's going on. Can you guys, I'm not sure if you can see it. Can you see it? Yep, we, see, we can see it. Okay. Um, all right. I, you know what, I can't see it though. <laughs> Let me uh, change my screen here. I'm going to stop sharing for just a minute. And just real quick, it looks like Wayne's got a question on uh, chat. I think it's from for Ron. I don't know if you can see it. it says, What's for what is Rotary International expectation regarding the Constitution compliance? I'll, I'll refer that to Ray. Ray. He's the head of that committee. Okay. I think Ray's on uh, Zoom, if I'm not mistaken. Ray, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Hey, Ray is just muted right now. You have to He's unmute him. Muted. You have to unmute him. I'll never there. got him. Got okay. it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, basically, uh, there you go. We had to adopt the Constitution, and there are multiple references in the Constitution that require that the bylaws uh, clarify specifically how the Constitution applies to the club. And the committee is working on that right now. Uh, we'll be monitoring our implementation to make sure that we're. We're in compliance as we implement the Constitution and whenever the bylaw is going to prove the same thing. Hope that answers Wayne's question. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Yep. Okay. Can you guys see my screen now? We can see you. Um, oh, but you can't see my screen? Yep. No. Uh. No. Let me try again. I think you got to share the other screen. Um, <laughs> Kathy, this is William in the Rotary meeting. If you yeah. share what you did before is share your screen. I, I'm guessing you have two screens or multiple screens up. When you share your screen, you could select the other screen that has your presentation, if that makes sense. Okay. And and then if that screen shows up on the Zoom, or should, and then you could just present on there if that makes sense. All right. Um, all right. Um, I have the large screen. It says share screen. Where are you going? Yeah. Where are you and going? Okay. there you go. Now we now we should be able to see your presentation. Yep. We can um, see it. Perfect. I'm sorry for being so. Uh, Deficient. No <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Yep. So I'm glad you can see it. Um, all right. So um, first of all, I just want to say that kind of our new theme for Neighborhood House is Together We Thrive. It's always been our mission to um, travel the journey um, and to link our entire community to help each other to thrive. 
and Neighborhood House has adopted a brand new program, which we call Strive to Thrive, which is a wraparound service for our, um, our participants who choose to um, not just participate in, in food pantry and clothes closet and the, basic, uh, the basics, but it's an assessment program where we evaluate all of the um, various kinds of uh, domains that might create a successful and healthy household. Um, we're in a process of uh, creating a program where we monitor each uh, participant um, along many different uh, domains. And this is a new experiment for us, but it's a wraparound program evaluating not just food sufficiency and basic needs, but um, more in-depth needs like um, like health of um, the healthy job seeking skills and so forth. So uh, the name of that program is called Strive to Thrive. And you'll be hearing a lot more about that. But um, a few weeks ago, Ascension has um, investigated how they can partner with us. So we're seeking different organizations in the community that can support our our clients as well as us. So I just wanna say, um, give a big thank you to both Rotary and to Ascension for supporting our, um, our progress as we move along. Um, now, Neighborhood House is kind of known for our basic services. We've got our food pantry, our clothes closet, our financial services. Those have been traditional services since 1968. But in 2015, we purchased our new building and there is so much more we have to offer. Um, we are transitioning our services and um, one of the huge um, reasons we can do that is because we did purchase our building on um, South Livernois. And I just wanna say thank you to the Rotary Club for um, believing in us back then and for believing in us now. Um, Pictured is one of our, our um, interview rooms in our, uh, our building, which is the one that Rotary sponsors. And it's been very interesting the way we Neighborhood House has benefited from purchasing this, um, this facility because when we we built it, we wanted it to be extremely flexible. And what happened was now that we're going um, virtual with all of our interviews, um, so clients don't have to come into the office and we can expose as few people to this virus as we can, this room is, um, has been one of our most used rooms because it's, it was created as a family interview room with extra space and it has a an exit and so forth, we've been able to use the rotary room to do face-to-face -face interviews with appropriate spacing and with appropriate um, ventilation and so forth. So it's sort of transitioned from our family interview room into our sustainability center where folks can come in and get their, um, their social services. So I just wanted to say thank you so much to Rotary for believing in us from the beginning and the great news is that in July of this year, we were able to pay off the mortgage on our office building and we are moving forward, um, onward and upward. So um, thank you so much. Part of the so much more is, I'm sorry, I'm going backwards, is that um, we have a wide variety of sustainability services. During COVID-19, we have been able to serve almost 1,159 individuals by the end of September at the food pantry. We had served enough food at the food pantry during this pandemic to serve 125,000 meals. And in spite of the fact that we were closed during March, April, and May, we have had 387 visits to the closed closet since um, being able to reopen. Um, we have provided a wide variety of economic services, which both include, um, include both um, financial, direct financial assistance, assistance with utilities, but um, prevention and different services that connect our clients to 
um, other resources outside of Neighborhood House. 215 individuals have benefited from our direct financial assistance, and we've been able to continue to enroll people in their unemployment services, their food assistance services, and we've been able to continue our counseling services virtually. So since um, COVID began during the first six months, we've served 1,400 people, distributed 125,000 meals, um, satisfied 216 um, um, requests for direct financial assistance that is uh, amounting to $60,000. We have also satisfied 382 requests for other kind of um, economic assistance, which could include um, connection to housing, eviction prevention, and we have a wide variety of um, sustainability services, including employment coaching, which is going to be more and more important as we move into 2021. And um, people who have found that they are um, not adequately employed any longer, um, that we can match people to um, better paying jobs and to new jobs. Um, one of the biggest services that we have been able to provide is internet support services to our clients. So folks who are living in a home that doesn't have um, access to Wi-Fi or computers. We have three safe stations set up in our building that are continually being monitored and cleaned so folks can come in and utilize our services, which has been especially important while the library's closed and their computers are not available. We have three computer stations that are safely set up for the um, public to come in and use. Um, we have adapted our education classes to being virtual. Um, we are still offering budget basics, um, computer 101, cooking matters classes that help people utilize the food from the pantry to make um, make nutritious meal. And we have partnered with Rochester Community Schools to create classes in student financial focus. We're actually offering student financial classes virtually um, on three different levels to our um, grade school, middle school, and high school students. And so far this month, um, over 60 families have participated in those virtual classes. It's been really a, a huge success. Um, we also are still going um, with our special programs, although socially distanced, um, providing over 450 families with um, backpacks and supplies at Blast Off to School, which Rotary helped with, um, with Thanksgiving meals and holiday gifts. So I, I mentioned at the food pantry, our community has joined together to provide over 125,000 meals, but it's Delivery is looking a lot just different. Folks can drop, drive up, drop their food off on, on carts. It's brought into the pantry. And so the volunteers, the donors, and the clients um, no longer need um, to, um, to, they can uh, provide the service with uh, a contactless um, aspect. Um, Rotary was, way back at the beginning of COVID, among the very first people to recognize that since we weren't able to have uh, food collections on a wide scale basis, we would need funds to purchase food. So um, just wanna say thank you um, for being right up there in the front to support us. Um, at that time, at the beginning, we looked at all of the reasons we, uh, all of the deficits we were going to have um, the deficits in food donations, clothing donations, events, and so forth. And we established a COVID emergency financial fund, which is being monitored on our website. Um, Rotary was one of the very first to contribute to that fund. And today, um, the goal on that fund was $914,000. We're within $10,000 of reaching that goal right now. And um, just want to say thank you to Rotary for helping launch that. Um, while we transition from the big, big um, donation-based um, uh, operations to a little smaller um, operation, 
we still have been successfully able to provide all those meals to our clients. And we just want to say thank you for everything um, that you have done, that the community has done for us. Um, we established a drive-through process so cars can just drive up, provide an order to uh, an order taker, have the order filled by the volunteers that you saw in the previous picture, and drive away with everything they need. Um, at one point during the summer, there was a, um, a, a, a produce, produce provider that uh, had 900 boxes of produce and within three to four hours, we were able to distribute those 900 boxes out to the community through a drive up um, situation like this. And, and we provided um, 200, excuse me, 22,500 pounds of food to the community in those four hours. And we still have all of, all of our traditional supporters. Um, we are getting donations consistently from um, a wide variety of um, resources. Meyer Simply Give is still going on. And um, right now, those $10 at a time donations that people can give at the counter at Meyer turned into $7,000 in food for the food pantry during the September, October initiative. Um, the holiday initiative at the Meyer on, on Rochester and Auburn Road is going on right now. And we will um, have double days. Anybody who brings $10 in that day, December 1st or December 12th, will have their $10 donation met by Meyer. So any $10 donation on those two days will provide $30 in support to the food pantry. Clothes Closet, again, has transitioned, um, but we're still offering clothing in a very safe way. Um, we're socially distanced. We have created um, barriers so that um, we can keep all of the staff safe. But the offering, but the um, space is very small. So we're limiting occupancy at the clothes closet at this time to 10 people. Um, but you can see that we're still working hard, getting those donations out on the floor and um, sorting, sorting them just as we always have. In the office, we're also practicing social distancing, um, taking our phone calls, making our appointments, and making sure that our financial and educational programs are still available in the community. And we're looking forward to the future because while the environment has changed, our mission has not. Um, Neighborhood House walks the path towards self-sustainability with our neighbors during times of hardship. And it is our vision that we live in a community of neighbors that help each other thrive. Because neighbors helping neighbors is the model of a strong community. And that's exactly what Rotary does for us. And we still need to make sure the community understands the need, um, which has not been well assessed since COVID started because like everything, the need changes on a daily basis. But prior to COVID, we know that from census statistics that 26% of the households we're in need of an organization like Neighborhood House because of income constraints. That, that situation fluctuates with the employment situation, but we still need to provide the basic needs and then um, additional, um, additional assistance to get our folks um, on their feet. We're continuing our special programs, but in different ways. Blast off to school used to look like this, this year, it looked like this, where we, we provided a drive up opportunity for folks to take a look at the different uh, supplies that were available. And they were provided to the folks that drove up in baskets. So again, we could have a contact free um, delivery situation. Thanksgiving this year also looks a little different in the past. Um, we had a karate club that provided all of the Thanksgiving meals for our clients. They, they spent the whole year um, making money and they went out, they did all the shopping, they did all the organizing, and they spent one evening with our clients um, providing food. Rotary was the very first organization that helped us transition our Thanksgiving because this year, 
um, neighborhood house had to purchase all of the turkeys and so forth. And so far um, in November, we have provided over 100 turkeys and Thanksgiving um, makings to, um, to our clients um, through the food pantry, but without the social gathering. Our seasonal programs are also um, moving right along. Our giving tree is still happening. We have pickup locations throughout the city, um, but they, the drop-off donations are contactless and we still plan on providing gifts for 500 kids in the community. And again, again the self-sufficiency programs are significant. Um, we are still providing transportation, but we put um, sneeze guards and cleaning restrictions in place. Um, however, we're helping folks um, get to their doctor's appointments, their social service appointments, and we are providing home food delivery. Um, we're providing about 60 home food deliveries a month. The bike program um, is uh, still going strong and our employment services are going to be more important than ever. This is a, a, an example of one of our stations. We're only operating the computer station on the right at the moment and keeping the um, left one um, unoccupied for social distancing. Um, we're offering phone and virtual consultations. Our computer classes have gone virtual. They used to look uh, like this. Um, we've also continued our cooking classes and all of our referral services, but they're being offered up by phone and by Zoom. So we, will, we still uh, value um, our community getting involved. We're still working with volunteers. Um, we have our online giving and everybody can find out more about what's going on at our website at ramh.org. So does anybody have any questions? Ah. Kathy, it looks like uh, Lindy Eastman has some questions here on Zoom. I don't know if you can see them on the chat. Um, I will try to do that. My computer's kind of going goofy on me right now. Okay, Linda, how do you, okay, uh, okay. How are you set for Thanksgiving meals? Do you still need items? We especially need frozen turkeys um, in a variety of sizes. We have boxes that are set, um, that are set for, um, Three people, so if a family drives up, they're prepackaged boxes with the, the ingredients. And ingredients are being accepted at the food pantry, at the Real Estate One office on Main Street, Karen Kotalis, um, and here at our office, um, the list, gift list, wish list is online, but the biggest need is frozen turkeys, which can be delivered right at the food pantry. Um, we received a gift of 40 turkeys yesterday from the Troy newcomers, and we can probably use another 30 or 40 um, turkeys before it's all said and done. Um, anything else? It looks like Linda has another question. She oh, had two questions. I love it. Um, oh, about counseling services, thank you. So we have a licensed social worker and a licensed psychologist who are working. Um, up until last week, they were doing some face-to-face -face counseling, but now it's all virtual. Our psychologist is certified to do, um, to do video chats and that's a volunteer program. Um, they're licensed, they pay their, their own insurance and um, they provide services to our clients at no charge. And somebody, oh yes, we are accepting donations toward the frozen tur turkeys. In fact, um, we, we did get a nice donation from Rotary for $500 and we were able to purchase 35 turkeys. The first 35 turkeys that went out in our program came from Rotary. Anything else? Thanks for That's being, I'm sorry. I was gonna say, I think so. it looks like we have no questions here in person. Okay, thanks for being a good audience. Thank you for all that you and your participants.
does in our community. It's awesome. Uh, there was a card going around for uh, Jay Eastman, who's home sick. And uh, with John Somerville on vacation, a big thanks for William Gross for stepping in. Thanks for helping us to attend and also our speaker. <laughs> Any other questions before we close this thing out? Next week? There will not be a meeting next week. You heard it from our governor. Well, wow. if it was me, I'd have it anyway, but we can't. Oh, yeah, we will have a meeting soon. Oh, in person. Everything's going soon, no lie. Anything else? Thanks for me being on Zoom, guys. <laughs>